Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Welcome back everyone! Our recipe book looks nearly complete, but we do have a few other things to learn how to insert. We're going to look at inserting checkboxes, so let's get started. Here we are in our recipe book that we've been building. Let's use our grouping to hide our ingredients and directions just for a little bit by clicking on the icon that looks like a minus or a dash up here at the top. And there we go, that looks much better. Okay, so there is one thing missing from our recipe book. What if we needed to know which recipes were vegetarian? Or maybe a friend is coming over for dinner and we need to make sure we've provided gluten-free options for them. So we're missing labels for these different dietary restrictions. Let's use this space on the right. I'm going to add a few here, but you add what works best for you and your family. Think about the items that would help you filter your recipe book by. So use that when you're filling out these columns over here and there we go. I've listed out a variety of options. If you need to, make sure to resize any columns. Now, how would you like to fill this in? Would you like to put an X in the box or would you like to write yes? Or better yet, let's use check boxes. They're fast, they're easy to fill out a recipe book or any type of data, and they really look nice and clean compared to a wall of text. So let's first select the area where we want the checkboxes to be. We're then going to right click, go down to view more cell actions, and then data validation. This window opens up. The criteria that we're looking for is checkboxes listed down here at the bottom, and everything else is our settings for these checkboxes. So first, you can customize the cell values by checking or unchecking this box. For example, you may want a checked box to be yes and an unchecked box to be no. You can uncheck this option if you prefer to keep the default and the default is true and false or check it and customize it. Next, we have our options for invalid data. You can actually set it to reject any input other than the checkbox. So being a personal recipe book, you may not need this. If you're sharing it with somebody, or you have formulas and functions in place that are dependent upon the data in these columns, always, always, always select reject so that you don't end up having to hunt down the place that someone accidentally messed it up. Last thing we have here is appearance, which refers to the message that is given if there is any type of invalid data entered into the cells. In this case, we can just write, click on the checkbox. That seems like a good enough message. And then click save. And there we go, we have checkboxes. So to use them, just click on them like this and see, so much faster and easier than writing out yes or no. And look how clean and professional it looks. It's very visual as compared to a wall of text. Now, let's test out that rejection for invalid text. I'm going to type some nonsense in here and then press enter and there, I get the rejection message. Not only that, because I wrote out a specific thing for appearance, this is my message. Click on the checkbox. So how nice is that? So I can say, okay, and look, it turned it back to a checkbox and rejected what I was trying to type. Now let's look at those cell values. When I select an unchecked box, up here at the top, it says false. When I select a checked box, it says true. So for this recipe book, that probably doesn't matter to you. Honestly, most of the time it doesn't. True and false work perfectly fine. Now, if you have another data set where you're using a formula or a function and you're referring to the data in the check boxes like this, you would really need to know what these cells are. And in this case, true or false. What I mean by that is if you wanted to count how many vegetarian meals there are, you would set it to count all that are true. If you changed it to something like yes, then you would need to change your function to say, hey, count all that are yes. Let's select all of this again, right click, 
more actions and data validation to go back in and look at this. Remember, I can set custom cell values and in this case, yes and no. But if you get really advanced into Google functions and formulas, you may want to use single letters or numbers. I'm going to leave this on so that you can see the difference. I'm also going to remove our appearance message so that you can see the difference and click save to get back out of here. Now notice how checks are appearing as yes instead of true this time and unchecked is appearing as no instead of false. Also, if I try to type in this cell and press enter, notice what my message is this time. Again, if this is your Google Sheet, that's probably fine. If you're sharing the Google Sheet with someone, it is nice to have a message to help them understand what they should be entering. We're going to cover that more in depth in our data validation module later on, but for now, you can see the difference. Let's go back into data validation again, and this time I want to show you the difference between reject and warning. So I'm going to select warning and save. Now I'm going to try typing in the cell and press enter. Notice this time it did let me type in the cell, but it puts a little red orange triangle in the top right corner. If I click on the cell or hover over the cell, a message appears. It's showing the default message, but again, I could have written a custom message. Okay, let's select everything and go back in again. Here's one more thing I like about this option for adding checkboxes. You can come back in here and specify the range. So right now there are only checkboxes in row two to row eight. What if I wanted to add hundreds of recipes? I need to make this expand to cover all of those extra rows. So I'm going to erase the eight and put 500 and then click save and there we go. Now with checkboxes, they are like the images we added that were in cells. Because they are in cells, we can apply formatting to them such as alignment just like this. I can do whatever I would like. I can add a fill color. You can use most of the formatting tools that you've learned about with these checkboxes. Again, because they are in the cells. Now let's say you're done. You've decided, hey, I'd rather not have these boxes, but I don't want to lose the actual data, meaning what is and what isn't checked. So let's select this data and go back into data validation again. And this time I'm going to click remove validation. And there you go. It turned everything into yeses and nos because that is what I had it set to. Remember, otherwise it would have changed it to true and false because that's the default. So use that little trick whenever you need to. Okay, everyone, that's not all, but rest assured you've done all the heavy lifting and this is the shortcut. Select the area where you want your checkboxes, click on the insert menu and select checkbox. Done. That's it. <laughs> so much easier, right? Everything is the same. So you can check the boxes. This is set to a default setting which is true and false for cell values. And the invalid inputs are set to a warning. And of course, the warning message is the default message. If you want more than that, you'll need to go into data validation like we were doing. So if you don't need the fancy settings and you're fine with these defaults, use the quick, easy insert menu and select checkbox. You made it. Checkboxes are such a great tool to have in your toolbox when working with Google Sheets. So go have fun updating your recipe book and remember to continue adding as many recipes as you can for our future modules as we begin to organize and work with it. So see you in the next module. This video is part of our complete course on Google Sheets. To watch the complete course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, Click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to watch additional videos, click over there.